Hello, and welcome to the Area One Fish of the Week. This is our second week of this series. I'm Kel Jackson, a Senior Product Manager here at Area One. And in this series, we go into a deep dive for a given fish that we've seen and give you a little bit of context around how Area One was able to catch that fish and uh, what we're doing behind the scenes every day. Last week, we looked at a clever fish where we actually saw some attacker had compromised a uh, email domain from a legitimate sender at a university and use that to craft a targeted fish. This week, we're going to be taking a look at a different fish and looking at one that is going to highlight all the different areas of the kill chain in which Area 1 operates. So without further ado, let's dive into that fish. All right. So this is the fish here. Um, and uh, to give you a little bit of uh, context, let's imagine you're working at a, a company and you see a, uh, this email. It's coming from support at your company name, and it's telling you that uh, your inbox is uh, about to stop receiving attachments, images, etc., because you've reached the storage limit. So a pretty typical fish in terms of you know demanding you know some degree of immediate um, urgency. It's asking the user to do something, click a link, and follow it. If the user had actually followed that link, they'll be taken to a page that we kind of see a screenshot of in that bottom right corner where it says uh, email upgrade center. And it has the user's name. The, the link obviously uh, um, pulls that information in. So the page that it takes you to um, will show you, will bring that uh, user's email um, address in there. And then it asks for the user's email. From that point forward, obviously the attacker could um, you know, has the password for that particular user uh, for that company password. They can use that to gain access to their email. They can, uh, you know, do things like start a wire transfer or try and use those credentials for other uh, points of entry to the customer. Then begin to spread fish, other malware, ransomware, and, and other things uh, from there. You know, kind of the <laughs> imagination's the limit there in terms of what they can do once they gain one person's email um, spread horizontally throughout the organization. And so one of the things that Area One talks about is, you know, typically fish are you know, one of the main points of entry for all the other type of malware that we see in the industry. And this is a great example of that. You know, once one user, one person selects that link, gives their credentials, gives their username and password, you know, the sky's the limit in terms of what the, you know, types of attack, the type of ways they can spread throughout the organization. So obviously, you know, these fish are pretty, pretty dangerous. And, you know, while, you know, they can be pretty simplistic uh, from an email perspective and from a wording perspective, they can also be complex and sophisticated. But as we see here, you know, there's a lot of damage that's possible. So as I mentioned, um, this particular um, fish gives us a good entry point to kind of talk about all the different points of the kill chain for an attacker. So this particular uh, fish, um, that link uh, brought, would bring you back to a compromised web page. So they actually found a legitimate web page, website out in the world, um, got access to it, and first got access to that web page. Then from there, they put that um, embedded within that uh, URL, that domain, that harvester link. So that uh, link that we saw on the previous page that asked for that user's um, password, they actually embedded that within that compromised web page. Then next, obviously, they would have to set up some campaign. You know, they they you know whether it's a, a variety of bots out there in the world, an infrastructure in order to be able to send out those emails um, in their attacks to um, users out there in the world. And then lastly, um, they're going to actually have to send out that information. So, you know, it's never exactly known exactly when these things are done. But from our proactive calling, Area One was able to determine you know when we were able to see this. And and what's interesting is that. You know, even though this attack first started going out um, on October 23rd, we saw as early as the 16th um, and sooner um, areas and portions of this attack being spun up out in the web. So it's really interesting, and this kind of highlights why it's important to be proactively scrolling in, into the infrastructure in the world, because we actually saw the IPs and domains and, and knew them as malicious before an, even, an email was even sent as early as October 16th. And we all actually saw information around these compromised domain um, and these harvester pages even a month before that in, in this particular instance, as early as September 19th, around some of these IPs that are used, as, as well as some of the compromised infrastructure that was spun up before this attack was even sent out um, into the world. So, you know, it really speaks to our, our, our web crawler, 
we're actually able to see this way before the attack was sent. It didn't matter what attack was sent. We actually knew that this uh, was coming from a compromised domain and we were able to, regardless of where it came from, able to um, know that and make a detection there. Um, secondly, we were able to, because we were able, we know what's happening on those web pages, we actually knew that those pages were gonna be asking for credentials and we, in our, our machine learning models, are able to detect that and see that. And so we knew regardless of what um, particular email would link back to these campaigns, we knew anything linking back to those pages was bad and we would block it as well. Um, next, you know, you know, this infrastructure came from a set of IPs and we knew those set of IPs that were sending out those, those emails. So we knew that attack infrastructure. So again, it didn't matter what was linked. It didn't matter what, um, you know, particular stuff was actually in the email, we knew anything coming from those domains was part of an attack infrastructure and we were able to make a detection on that as well. And then lastly, we knew um, this was a particular spoof, we recognized that. So, you know, obviously this was not actually coming from support at these companies, but was coming from a spoofed attempt to appear that way to the user. So we were able to detect that obviously, as well as we were able to detect that malicious link and that content that was within the email itself. So. I bring this up to sort of show that um, attackers are spinning up this infrastructure and using it in a variety of ways. You know, they're compromising domains, they're spinning up um, um, infrastructure to be able to send out emails and they're crafting the individual emails themselves. And so this is why it's really important to be a part of that entire um, infrastructure. It's a bit like, um, you know, the fish sort of tells a story and, and area one is reading ahead of that story. We're seeing the words before it's even published. So we're actually able to see that entire infrastructure and we're aware of everything that's happening, regardless of the, of the particular emails that are sent or regardless of you know what links are contained within. We know that full story and we're building that story ahead of time so that we can stop that attack before it ever goes out. We're not waiting for a quarantine or a user report it and that damage can be affected, we're actually building that story ahead of time to be able to detect those fish. So to kind of give you a little bit of an example for a few of the areas and, and, and people that we've seen. So then, and I think the interesting thing here is it kind of highlights some of the different ways in which fish, uh, fishers and um, decide to send out their emails. So in one example, we see a consumer products company where they really just used a shotgun approach. They they sent out 40 plus recipients, basically any email they could find from that organization, they sent out and they tried to send this fish. Um, in other examples, we see much more um, targeted um, attacks. So in one particular software company, we saw that they picked out a few distribution groups uh, within that company and tried to, you know, kind of go that route. So instead of, you know, they might imagine that, you know, maybe individual emails are scanned, but maybe this, you know, that's distribution list, uh, distribution list gives them some kind of a way to sneak past uh, defenses into the, the company. And lastly, they were really targeted with one um, electronics manufacturer. They actually sent just to the CFO, you know, that, you know, why they picked that out um, is unclear, but, you know, we, this kind of gives an example for the sort of gambit that uh, fishers try and use in their targets. You know, they might, you know, use a shotgun approach all the way down to really, really targeted one-off approaches. And again, this is why it's really important to especially in the one-off approach example, you know, if it's only, if we're, if we were relying on uh, samples of a malware sample or, you know, a block domain, and we, you know, really needed that, you know, example in the past to be able to build these models, it would be really a, a big problem in this one-off example where they're really targeted and sending one fish. Um, and this is again, why it's really important to have that full um, infrastructure to know before even that first email is sent, we already know, um, you know, that, you know, based on who it's coming from and what's contained within, that it's, you know, up to no good. So just to really highlight again and, and, and summarize how Area One knew what was happening. So, you know, here's a little snippet of that of that website. Um, I actually pulled in the uh, a screenshot from, you know, it's not the prettiest website in the world, but, you know, was a website um, that was functioning as a poorly run business, well, as, a, as a business um, with some links and, and, and information within. Um, and then they were able to eventually, you know, access that and then put in their information um, down the line and include that URL in those phishing emails. So how did Area One catch it? Again, we were there at every stack of the uh, every step and stage of that kill chain. We knew ahead of time that that domain uh, that that website was compromised. That within that compromise, it contained a 
credential harvester. We knew the IPs and the infrastructure that was used to actually send out the emails. And so that was already flagged before even that first fish even came out. And then lastly, you know, from the fish itself, from that email itself, we knew, you know, the sender of it. We knew the links contained within. We knew it was containing a spoof and tried to pretend to be someone that it wasn't. And for all of those reasons, we were able to um, flag. And so there was actually multi reasons and why this particular fish was stopped in all organizations. But any one of those reasons would have caused a detection. It would have caused us to stop and make that scan. So, you know, with that said, I think, you know, it's important to, you know, give a little bit of a caution. You know, this particular fish, you know, raised a lot of red flags, gave a lot of clues that it was a fish. But, you know, the reason why I picked this is because it kind of highlights all the different things that we're looking for, but it doesn't include everything. So, you know, while this particular fish may have uh, raised multiple red flags, other fish might raise just a few. So, uh, you know, definitely a good caution to remember that it's important to um, look at solutions like Area 1 that are using everything as opposed to just one off, you know. Saying, you know, I definitely want to caution our listeners to not say, OK, well, because this is a spoof and, you know, we might be using things like um, DMARC and DKIM and, and email verification, we can stop that. You know, other senders could be crafty and they might use that same attack infrastructure. They might use that same compromised domain, but send it from a Gmail account, which is going to obviously pass DMARC and, and DKIM. Um, and so then it would bypass, in that particular example, that red flag. So this is why it's important to kind of take that full context because attackers can be crafty and use different examples in different ways in order to be able to get things past the fences. And it really takes that holistic story. Again, Area 1 is reading that playbook before it's ever launched and deployed. So we know what that attacker is doing way before they ever do it. So again, our conclusion, um, you know, Area 1 is really staying ahead of attackers and um, catching and reading that full story. And this is this is, fish is a good example because it shows that full story kind of coming to bear and how Area One was, you know, there every step of the way and, and there months ahead before that um, email was ever deployed. We knew a month ahead of time, you know, this is something to look out for um, way before that first email ever started coming through and able to make detections, preventing what could have been, you know, a very, you know, potentially devastating, um, impact for our customers.